What's going on guys? Garkam at you with another Magic the Gathering video. Today's video I wanted to kind of do a follow-up to kind of my video that if you saw yesterday's video uh, about drafting. I kind of want to do a follow-up but more so in the sense of deck building which could also be a nice little tidbit on actually trying to figure out what kind of deck you want to put together either, either in a limited format or even in just a you know regular standard deck format in general so in this video we're going to kind of dive into you know some tips some tricks uh some ideas that you may want to look into when it comes to deck building itself it's just to kind of guide you along your ways whether you know why certain decks you know that you see in the meta work so well and why you know sometimes you build a deck and it just it has you have a good concept in the back of your head but doesn't really come to fruition but overall guys we're going to dive into that if you like the video hit that like button if you want to really post more videos hit that subscribe button but let's dive into deck building and all the things all right so first things first when you first go into your deck builder or collection whatever it is you kind of need to start off with an idea of like what kind of concept you want to go for the deck um uh, whether you want to play particular colors whether you want to go for a particular uh type of card you know that's that's kind of the concept you want to go for so let's say for example you want to play a blue white deck uh you gotta kind of sit there and be like okay if i now filter this blue and white what kind of cards am I looking for? Um, do you want to go something like Azorius Control and be very control heavy, kind of control the board, you kind of control out the game until you get to the late game where you can kind of go off with like your control -y kind of aspect. Do you want to go something maybe a little bit more aggressive, like a like you know an Azorius Flyer style deck where it plays a lot of little small drops uh, to be very aggressive and kind of hopefully hit your opponent in the face before they can do anything in response. Um, I mean, that's one of those things you just got to kind of figure out. There's also reasons why certain cards work well together. So first things first, we're just going to make sure that this is on standard. Uh, this, th these concepts will also work for Historic. Um, I mean, that that is the one thing. But uh, first you want to do is, what you want to do is figure out, you know, what our general base is of. Uh, so let's just see. Um, blue, white. Um, let's see, what kind of concept do we want to go with here? Uh, let's go with a concept that's kind of pretty much proven. Let's go with, um, let's go with, like, blue white control so what we're gonna do is you know you're gonna go through your collection here and depending on what your what value of collection you have whether you have a lot of rares whether you're more of a limited budget there's there's things you can like look forward to so i think what i'm gonna do is actually i'm gonna cut here and i'm gonna just kind of dive into a blue white control deck and we're gonna kind of you know take it apart and kind of like figure out exactly why that deck works the way it works all right so we have ourselves here a blue white control deck that i had in my playlist i don't know how up to date it is because i don't really play a lot of control but i do occasionally like to spin into some things I think this is one of the ones i was uh spinning around before i dove into like my yorian when i did in a video before but pretty much overall the concept here is just a pretty much generic style blue control so what you want to do is you kind of look at the cards and kind of see where the cards are spun so if you first look at the cards, we got Birth of Miletus, which is a good card to help us search for more lands in our deck uh, to kind of like thin the deck out for when we need to look for answers. So one other thing that you can, that you want to look for is as much as these colors uh, don't have ramp, it's always good to have things that can kind of search your library for particular land colors that you may be needing to actually uh, hopefully get in the cards you want out on the battlefield. So this helps us with some planes, gets us a 0-4 blocker, and then we gain some life, which is definitely good against aggressive matchups. Then we here we have an Aether Gust, uh, just because Mono Red is very prominent. That's the other thing when it comes to deck building that you want to look out for. Is like what is the meta? Like it's like what do you, what, is, what is something you're seeing a lot of? And I think this concept can be used for either Magic the Gathering Arena or even physical Magic itself. If you play at a local card store, I mean your your card store has a meta. Like there's always the deck that you know everyone's always playing. So if you're building a deck around something, you kind of want to build it around maybe what people are playing to give yourself a better edge when it comes to actually hopefully coming out with a victory. So like Aether Gust here is a good card in the sense that it kind of there's a lot of red there's a lot of green going out you know simic ramp with nissas and stuff like that and also the the mono red aggro so this is actually a pretty good card and then in certain factors you know if we don't need it uh we have to ferry to discard it and kind of draw a new card so it kind of you know has its uses in case of the matchup but either gust is another solid card just based on the current meta there is in magic following up with fey of wishes this is a card that you may have seen in the Zorius flyers deck um and I, as much as i'm kind of going over Zorius flyers deck i'm not really trying to tell you uh exactly like we're, we're not doing like the whole breakdown of a video and whatnot but we're just kind of breaking it down and kind of seeing how these cards meld together so fey wishes uh you know it's a two it's a two drop one four flyer with the ability to discard two cards and return it back to your hand or you can you which which is the real reason why people mostly play this it has a four cost sorcery spell that allows us to now go into our outside the game uh area and grab a card and add it to our hand uh it, it pretty much our sideboard so in this particular deck sideboard is key 
this can kind of get you that answer just in a best of one matchup because there's no sideboard in, in between games um this allows us to get something maybe to answer something our opponent's playing that we uh you know we we have we may have answers in our library but maybe it gets us specifically that card when we need it uh a turn later which is definitely a card that is very good so this helps us with that helps us control the board a little bit more then you go to omen of the sea very solid flash card that we can play at any time enchantment allows us to draw a card and then scry or allows us to scry to and then draw a card which is which is super good in the sense that it allows us to kind of look at the top two cards of our deck figure out if those are cards that we want if we like either of them we keep them on top and then we throw whatever we don't want on the bottom or we go completely blind and throw them throw them both on the bottom and then draw a card which is definitely good in that concept it allows us also to later in game uh tap three and sacrifice him can just scry too which helps us set up maybe something we're looking for later in case we need to find an answer so that's why omen is used here it helps us kind of set things up helps us get card advantage it's always good to get things that get you cards because when you have when you've drawn more cards into your deck you've drawn more answers possibly for the opponent you're playing Narset Parter of the Veils, card that if you have played a uh, Azorius Flyer, Azorius uh, Control deck, uh, you probably have run into this card. It's a card that slows our opponent's drawing down, so they can't draw more than one card a turn. Allows us to dig the top four cards of our library, look for a non-creature, non-land card among them, put into our hand. So allows us to look for an answer possibly, maybe to wipe the board, maybe just you know uh, remove something, or even looking for another Narset or even a Teferi. Definitely a good card in that sense. And these are one of those cards that are kind of going away in. Uh, in september so these are uncommon planeswalkers are something you're not gonna have to worry about but overall it helps us control the, the our opponents drawn so we can kind of get advantage and our opponent kind of still stays behind a little bit then you have teferi oh boy teferi i mean that's one of those cards that everyone knows it's definitely a control card because it pretty much stops our opponent playing anything on our turn and allows us to play any sorcery on our opponent's turn by plus and one or we can kind of bounce something back by minus and three and draw on a card so definitely Definitely a solid card. Definitely a very controlled card. It's blue white. It slows down the game tremendously just because, like I said, they can't play anything at instant speed, uh, which definitely uh, slows down the game for us to, in our benefit. So, like you know, mono red playing Embercleaves, they have to do on their main. They can't really sneak it in on attack, which is why Teferi is like one of those cards that kind of frustrates people, especially uh, decks like you know Simic Flash or any decks that really rely on instances to really get things onto the battlefield. So Teferi is one of those definitely control cards. And Shadow of the Sky is like another card. If you know what it does, it just wipes out the whole board of creatures. Uh, and if there's creatures of four or greater, we draw a card, but it destroys all creatures. So every, it wipes out the board, cleans the board up, get, allows us to kind of get, you know, ahead on the board, uh, whether it's us actually playing something or it's just us, you know, eliminating our opponent's creatures that may be trying to attack our face. Definitely slows the game down tremendously. So just a very solid card in a control deck. Teferi Master of Time, the new Planeswalker that came from uh, M21. Very solid Planeswalker, I think, for a control deck just because it's four mana, it has three loyalty. It, it, it plays very well into the curve, allows us to draw a card and discard a card. So if we have something in our hand, we can discard it. If it's something that doesn't answer our opponent's deck that we're playing, we can minus three and phase out a creature uh, until uh, its controller's next turn, or minus ten, we can take two extra turns. Uh, definitely a card that slows down the game tremendously, just be just from phasing out maybe something that our opponent's trying to build up or attack us in with. Uh, the ability to draw cards and discard cards, like the ability to just draw a card for not really paying any uh, mana is definitely good. And, and the the ability to actually do this on our turn and our opponent's turn allows us to kind of speed this up a little bit more. Uh, if our opponent's also playing in a slower deck, uh, drawing a card, discarding a card multiple times in multiple turns in a row, definitely will build it up pretty quickly and it will allow us to dig for answers possibly that we need to find. So definitely a very control based card. Now Spot the Conqueror is Death. Uh, another control heavy card, Exile's target permanent opponent controls to convert mana cost three or greater, which Definitely takes out a lot of things that are currently in the meta as a particular creature. Uh, Non-creature spells our opponent's control cost two, next two, uh, two more to cast their next turn, uh, which is definitely good. So it's not any, anyone else also playing control, so it makes our opponent's control spells that much more expensive. You know, making something cost instead of two mana, cost four mana is definitely more costly, and it definitely does slow your opponent down from playing multiple spells, especially if they run a very non-creature spell heavy deck. And then the three thing to return target creature or planeswalker with a plus one plus one counter or loyalty counter is definitely strong. So if our Teferi got off the battlefield or Teferi Master Time, um, you know, Narset, or even one of our creatures, you know, it's definitely definitely a, a good thing to get those back on the battlefield to allow us to, you know, kind of not even have to pay. They just kind of come back on our beginning of our upkeeps and we allow, it allows us to kind of, uh, you know, kind of use them immediately. Then you got Dream Trawler, which is definitely like the finisher for this deck. Uh, not only does it um, not only does it get plus one plus zero every time we draw a card, as lifelink kind of, you know, gets our health back up high. Every time we attack, we get to draw a card and then we can discard a card and pretty much uh, we give it hexproof so our opponents can't target spells at it. As long as we have a handful of cards, we can kind of protect this as much as we need to. 
And then Ugin uh, is the new Planeswalker if you haven't seen him either. A, definitely a very annoying Planeswalker uh, in the sense that he can deal 3 damage to any target, so it doesn't matter. Planeswalker, creature, player. Uh, you can minus X and you get to actually uh, exile uh, converted mana cost permanents with uh, X or less uh, that are one or more colors. So anything that's not artifact it actually gets eliminated. Um, definitely gets rid of a lot of like a lot of decks play monocolor or multicolor. But definitely gets a lot of the answers. If you look here, we don't really play a lot of things that will be on the battlefield uh, other than our planeswalkers, really, that will be affected by this. But definitely gets rid of a lot of things. Does not get rid of Nissa lands. So that's the unfortunate thing because Nissa lands are colorless because they're lands. Lands don't have color. Uh, but definitely a cool card in general because there's a lot of uses. And if you get to the minus 10, which is actually pretty easy because, um, you know, two plus twos and things already at 11. Uh, so if you can get around there and slow the game down enough, you can definitely get a minus 10, gain seven life, draw seven cards, and then put seven permanent cards from our hand onto the battlefield. So definitely a good card in a control deck. It's definitely one of those cards that when this is played, uh, we're usually in a good place to possibly finish out the game and pretty much have advantage at this point to then win the game uh, in the following turns. But then going down, continue with like uh, uh, your 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 Azorius control deck then plays a lot of lands because you know it's important for us to get to a lot of lands because it allows us to play multiple spells to kind of control the game out to kind of slow the game down. The one thing that this Azorius control deck does, which I think a lot of Azorius control decks have gone away from, doesn't really play a lot of counter spells. So this one's more of let's play stuff on the battlefield. Uh, let's kind of you know try to hit our opponent with spells, uh, affect them or affect creatures that our opponent plays rather than you know prevent them from coming out onto the battlefield. So that's the one thing that's definitely important. But, you know, we've got Castle Armament. We'll make some tokens in case we want to get some damage in. If we haven't drawn any creatures, you know, seven planes. Got Castle Vantress to help us scry the top of our deck. Six islands, one hollow fountain, three temples of lightning. Same thing to kind of scry. Uh, uh, we, got, we got a Triome here. You know, we don't play red anything, but the idea that we can use it to either, you know, get blue or white it counts as an island, plains, or mountain. Uh, as well as we can tap three, we can actually cycle it and draw a card, which is definitely good. We got Fabled Passage, you know, just maybe look for a particular land that we're looking for. Fabled Ruin, uh, Field of Ruin to kind of destroy target non basic. Um, so that's good. So it allows us to maybe get rid of something like a Blast Zone or something like that. But usually Blast Zone doesn't affect us too much, but maybe they have a land that uh, actually turns into a creature. I forget what the land, the land is off the top of my head, but this is a good way to eliminate that. And then we get into Planar Beacon, which allows us to gain life every time we play the Planeswalker. This is definitely a very Planeswalker heavy deck. But now going into the concept of how, why this deck works, uh, like it, when you combine the cards together, it really just slows down the game enough to get control, uh, as as an Azorius control deck would do. Like you're, the whole point is in a control deck is you want to always have control of the game state re regardless of uh, what's on the board. So we have answers for a lot of things. It allows us to slow our opponent down. Allows us to get card advantage, which is always a benefit when it comes to Magic. And in that sense, it just drags the game out long enough that we can get the things that we need to get on the battlefield. They just pretty much either eliminate our opponent's creatures or things that they do to get their win condition and allows us to then eventually hit them and pretty much win the game that way. So that's kind of how a control deck works. Uh, there are cards you can re replace if you don't have it. Um, you know, this is a very heavy uh, mythic and rare based uh, deck. Uh, you know, when it comes to Fae of Wishes, Fae of Wishes then can go into your deck and get anything here. As you kind of see, we have a definitely a very, we, very, very diff, diverse like uh, deck list of things we can definitely go search for in case we want it. It all depends on the matchup. As you can see, it's 15 separate cards because you know we're not playing sideboard regularly, so this allows us to go search for it. Um, so it's one of those things when it, it, it has things for all circumstances. Um, but overall, I, I mean, control deck is pretty fun. Uh, you can definitely build a control deck that's more counter based. There's a lot of counter spells that are definitely uh blue and uncommon are are common and uncommon uh you know there's things to balance the board out you can always place things that are like you know exile target thing like you know banish and light or something like that to get rid of something in that sense uh so there there are cards you can do if you don't have the you know all the mythics and rares to kind of build like a more intense like mythic and rare style control deck but i mean you, this deck here it has a concept it, it plays the cards that make that concept happen does it always work not not in not all the time, but usually like these decks in best of one, it really depends on matchups. Certain matchups are were more favored, certain matchups were less favored. Uh, this matchup probably the most the worst matchup this probably has is something super aggressive, uh, like something like mono red that's definitely gonna get a lot of damage in really really quick. So if we can get through like the burst damage they usually have at the beginning of the game and kind of get to the end of the game, there's a good chance we may win. Um, but overall, I mean this deck definitely can hold its own. 
Uh, I, I, it's kind of surprising that we don't see a lot more control. I think right now we're get, we got a lot more ramp strategies, trying to get Ugin out a lot sooner, getting Nar, Nar said this is out, things like that. Um, but overall, I mean, this is one of those decks that stand the test of time. Uh, there's not too much that we're losing when rotation happens, but overall, um, this is kind of a concept that you can't go for. All right, so I wanted to do another concept here. Uh, pretty much we're playing the same mana, but let's just spin it a little differently and we went for more of a control aspect. Or more, con more control, uh, more aggro aspect. So this is what we, what I, you know, this is a Skycat Flyers deck. It's pretty straightforward, pretty budget friendly too. It doesn't really require many rares. I actually think the only thing that's really rare in here is other than Safara is, is probably the Brazen, the Brazen Borrowers and the Hollow Fountains, which are definitely cards you don't need for the deck. Um, oh, and the Hushbringers, but you can definitely build a much budget friendly version of this. I think I went over one in my budget friendly deck. I don't, I don't know if you've seen that, but that's definitely a deck uh, list to look at. Have de decks have different concepts um but this is pretty much just an aggro aggressive deck so the whole point here is it's a lot of low drops it's a lot of let's get in these like ting 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 little bits of damage you know one two points of damage a turn uh from multiple creatures healers talk to help us gain a little bit of life loyal pegasus uh you know just to fly over the whole concept of everything flies uh so the whole point is hopefully fly over a lot of your opponent's creatures if they play them unless they have reach which is the only downfall to this deck um, but it is definitely just trying to get all this damage in over the air. And then the whole concept here is we play a big board of all these little small drops and we play something like this, which is called Rally of the Wings. It untaps all our creatures. It uh, it gives all our flying creatures plus two plus two until end of turn, which in turn, if we've been pinging our opponent until we get to maybe like turn four or turn five, definitely by then we have enough damage on our opponent to actually finish off our opponent. Uh, this is one of those decks that I, I think that people are going to have to get creative if they still want to kind of play something like this just because like rally the wings which is the kind of the big concept of the deck uh is something that is rotated out i don't know if the other card i can't think of the name it's a three drop cost uh that gives all our creatures indestructible and puts counters on them and vigilance uh that may be something but if that's something also from like the war of the spark and ravnica thing that's also something that's going to be rotated out so this is something that we'll have to wait and see possibly what comes out um and there's a few things from i think m20 that are also rotating but overall, I mean, this concept here is it's a lot of cheap, uh, aggressive things that are just trying to get damage in uh, as quickly as possible, as much as possible, and then trying to finish you out with like one big swing. Uh, the concept is pretty straightforward. I mean, this is kind of like the same concept as Mono Red. It's a lot of cheap stuff. Uh, it gets decently good on curve. Um, and then Ember Cleave is the finisher, whereas Rally the Wings is the finisher here. So both concepts are pretty straightforward. Uh, I mean, I would go more in depth, but I think if you haven't seen it already, this deck is pretty straightforward it's just attack 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 hopefully rally and finish off your opponent all right so this is another deck i did a video already on it's more of a budget friendly deck too because the budget here is not actually too too crazy uh it's called boros transmog um it's a pretty straightforward concept but it, it, in theory this is a mini combo deck because what the deck consists of is a bunch of non-creature cards and then there's two end rage fours runners which is pretty much our only creature in the deck and as you can clearly see the mana we're playing is not uh how we're going to be playing this creature so the the whole concept here is we built a deck that pretty much plays around this card transmorgify it's a new card for m21 it allows us to exile target creature and then that creature's controller reveals the top card of their library until they reveal a creature card that player puts that card into the battlefield and shuffles the rest of their library so what we're doing here is we're actually we're actually building a, a board full of uh, tokens so pretty much every card we have here allows us to get tokens on the battlefield uh in some sort of way this one gains us life this one for example gets us two tokens one red one white uh, this one allows us to get two tokens, also allows us to um, gain life equal to a uh, number of creatures we have on the battlefield, for, uh, which is definitely good. You got Tibble, which is another card that pretty much prevents our opponent from gaining life, so they can't gain life from us you know, damage with them. And it allows us to get little 1-1s. One Goblin Wizardry, new card, allows us to get you know two 1-1s one with Prowess, which is another ability from M21. But overall, the whole point here is build into the board of our little small 1-1s. One and then we're going to combo it with transmorgify any of our one ones now will turn into this end race force runner which the combo is we combo a token and then we search our library for one of our only two creatures hopefully we don't draw any of these uh and then we get a seven seven uh trampler with vigilance and which also gives us which also gives our other creatures plus two plus two vigilance and trample that turn so if we if we've been playing tokens on curve pretty well uh by the turn by the time we get to turn four if we have transmorgify we definitely have a decent board and actually if our opponent you know hasn't really been doing much this definitely could finish them off by surprise it's kind of like a, a, a simple combo it doesn't really require too many pieces it just requires a transmorgify and just a board full of tokens uh so this is like a simple combo there's other combos out there uh that get a little more tricky but i mean this is like a simple deck like 
we you know the deck is really built around this and the idea is how do, what do we want to cheat out into the battlefield to kind of give us that edge i mean you don't really want to play anything that's just gonna you know be a creature uh that's just you know a five five or a six six like the idea that when we play the end race force runners that's a vigilance trample and haster that's a seven seven if we play on turn four turn five there's a good chance our opponent doesn't really have anything that can block it and prevent a lot of that damage as well as it pretty much you know makes us a very aggressive turn four turn five and if we have another transmogrify we can we can repeat the process and do it the following turn um i mean this is something i've done a video on definitely an interesting deck when it works uh, it's fun to to have a combo go off in a way um i mean there's i think various videos i've seen of other people playing various combo decks uh all right so i mean here is another one that's pretty much another combo style deck uh this is something you may have come across it's it's the combo is is kind of tough to pull off just because of um you have to find the right cards and also your opponent has to be playing a slow enough deck that they're not just gonna outpace you from pulling off this combo so this is pretty much a teamer mill deck uh, it plays uh, Song of Creation, which is the, the main combo piece. So, like, if you think about this, there's usually a main combo piece to the, at most combo decks. Um, so, Song of Creation here is you may play additional land on each of your turns, and when you recast the spell, draw two cards, and then you end up discard your hand. So, the idea here is we want to play this, um, and we want to play a Teferi's Tutelage. So, the, the, the combo here is we play Tutelage on turn three, and probably hopefully Song of Creation on turn four, turn five, and then we have things to kind of allow us to draw cards. So, um the combo is every uh whenever we draw a card target opponent mills two cards so every time we play a spell when song of creation is out our opponent's milling two, uh four cards every time we play a single spell so if you look at the spells here you may be like okay i can understand here so start with ops uh because it's a one cost draw a card uh definitely a card it allows us to kind of get a cheap spell that allows us to scry and draw a card but like idea it's a spell that you know draws us a card it allows us to also um jump start it which means we get to play an additional time by discarding a card and playing the mana cost again um and then following that up with Storking dragon fire just for spot, some spot removal growth spiral to draw a card put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield so in case we hit land cap we can play additional land teferi's tutelage is one of the combo pieces also when it comes to the battlefield we can draw a card discard a card so definitely another way to draw a card uh alkalite is actually in here not for the actual creature but for the sorcery uh ability of allowing us to Pay one green and then we get to add a mana of any color so we pretty much get to filter a color put a mana in the mana pool of any color that we need maybe we need a blue mana for opt uh to kind of keep the combo going we got uro titan of Na uh, nature's things kind of ramp up a little bit um allows us to gain some life draw a card and yada 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 but if we're discounting a lot of cards we'll get Uro out into the battlefield maybe to gain some life uh to kind of keep the things going in later turns storm's wrath is kind of here as a board wipe hopefully because the problem is if we get a super aggressive deck we don't have any way to wipe the board out if we are pretty low on life this kind of you know we we are going to die just due to like creatures attacking us because we really don't play too many creatures that are really going to slow us to put it down song of creation is uh the main combo piece stone coil serpents at the x because we can play it for free and creates a counts as a spell which makes song of creation go off which then counts that thing and we just got a bunch of things here that you know a bunch of lands keychers triumphs for some cycle but really just you know a simple teamer deck uh, it is kind of tough to get this one off just because you have to have the right amount of mana so sometimes certain combo decks are a little bit more complex but when this combo goes off it's actually kind of fun because you know you start gaining a but you start playing these little cheap spells the phase tutelage goes off you know you're draw you're making your opponent mill every time you play a spell if you play you know let's just say 10 spells in a turn that's your you you uh you would then draw 20 cards your opponent then mills 40 cards so it's a it's an interesting combo you know it's something that i've seen people play um so i mean that's another concept like uh when it comes to deck building it's like what kind of deck you want to build is it is it you know your basic control is it your aggro is it your combo and there's like that other category which is like your mid-range so let's just go with like you know something like mono green stompy so pretty much if you don't know what mono green stompy or just a mono green aggro deck is it's a mono green deck where you start playing things that just get bigger and bigger and bigger uh it goes it, it's not more of a deck to hopefully beat your opponent by turn three turn four turn five it's a deck that can probably is more than likely to win between like turns five and turns like seven uh so this deck here is pretty straightforward um it's a deck i've been messing around with it's i i it's kind of gone through some changes but it the overall concept is pretty straightforward so it plays like pill collector which is a one one but something that gets bigger every time i play something else bigger on the battlefield uh Ozolith here is because there's things that cap counters so when counters leave the battlefield hopefully we you know we can replace them onto other things far cry troll because it's a solid two drop that's actually a three three um and it has plus one plus one counters cool heart burner just because it has reach and if we 
you know, need something to fight something in the air. This kind of can fight something. Um, and it, you know, gets plus X plus zero equal to the amount of creature cards in our graveyard. Ram through because it makes our creature deal damage to target uh, other creature. And if the creature had trample, you know, excess would go to the uh, controller's face. Um, but overall, I mean, the, the concept here is like scavenging ooze. It helps us exile things from our opponent's graveyard. So it gets rid of things like Uro or things that reoccur like the cats. It's definitely a cool card in that sense. Rose Suck Beast. But as you can see here, the curve is actually pretty good in the sense that everything gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And then, it, you know, kind of comes to a bang. And like it kind of fills in each in itself. Uh, I would say it's on the more mid rangey side. You could say, also say it's like a mid range aggro deck just because everything's more creature based. We don't really play too many spells other than the Great Henge, Ram Through, and the Ozolith. Um, you know, the, the overall mid-range is about turn three, turn four is where a lot of our good cards are. But I mean, we're at an average of a 2.6. But overall, I mean, the deck is pretty straightforward in the sense that it's just playing creatures that are just bigger, trying to stomp over your opponent's face. Because I mean, when someone plays a 3-3 three, three on turn two, it's it's definitely something you gotta look out for. And then the things get just much bigger, much bigger. Like Love Shark Beast, if you play it on curve, you know, 5-5 five, five on turn three um you know yorvo gets big gem razor is good because it can mutate on top of something if it had counters it gets additional counters so like a stone cold serpent at three then you mutate on it for uh this it becomes a seven seven breach and trample uh there's certain things quest and beast is a, just a very strong card in general it's definitely something that's not going away just because it's a vigilance death touch in haste and it can be blocked by creatures uh power two or less but like the overall like idea of the deck is to kind of stomp on your opponent's face and just get in there for damage and the goal here is just playing big creatures that just are hard to deal with by blocking with other creatures and just doing damage uh to your opponent's face and now the final thing i just want to kind of go over uh in deck building is like playing like a tribal based deck so if you don't know what tribal is it's when you play a deck of a certain tribe or type um in a sense like like goblins are a thing if you haven't played against a goblin deck or played a goblin deck um you know flyers is technically a tribal um because everything has flying uh you know playing something that all has death touch all has lifelink like a mono weight lifelinker kind of style deck uh but this one for example uh, just as an example is like a naya version of cat cats and dogs uh because with m21 we got the rin and siri which kind of gives us tokens equal if we if we played either cats or dog spells uh but overall here it's actually kind of an interesting concept because like a lot of things are cats it's we got some dogs you know pack leader um we got some lions but the whole, whole idea here is Everything in the deck, for the most part, when it comes to creatures, is one of the two. You know, we have things that take advantage of Kahira, um, which is definitely good. You know, things that help out our cats, um, which are, are good. You know, this helps out our dogs. It's like we have the dog and cat lords. So the overall concept here is to kind of like build everything around that. So the main concept is written in Siri is we want to just play cats and dogs to take advantage of that and possibly use the the three mana tap it and you know do that stuff which is pretty cool. You may have seen things like elementals where the whole decks are elementals. And I mean I don't have my I can't seem to find my elementals like I must have like deleted it because I was kind of running out of space of decks. But uh, I mean you have the other tribal concept of simic mutate which is you know everything in our deck is mutate this is something i haven't updated in a while so i do apologize if it's a little bit data list i know there's other things that have been kind of added kind of mixed around but like you know the idea here is everything in our deck for the most part other than maybe the grazer and the omori all have like some sort of like mutate so the goal is that you mutate on top of things and you know you do these abilities by mutating so there's like things where you just build your deck around a certain concept and when it comes to like deck building i mean it's it's more so just trying to find things that you like uh, it's kind of fun to experiment certain things, uh, you know, when it comes to certain concepts. So, I mean, the thing is, like, let's just take, for example, this is actually a deck list I'm working on. It's a Death Touch tribal style deck, which we want to use the benefit of Hooded Blyfang. I've seen certain versions of it. I just try to mix around my own version. So everything in our deck, in, in a sense, is creating some sort of a Death Touch uh, thing. So, you know, all our creatures have Death Touch, Death Touch, you know, the goal here is just to create things with death touched for hooded blifing so i mean if you don't know hooded blifing does is whenever creature you control attacks each opponent loses one life you gain one life and whenever creature control with death touch deals damage to a planeswalker destroy that planeswalker so i mean the real goal here is every time we attack we're just dealing additional damage to our opponent uh just on the base of attack so it's kind of like uh the stupid salamander in mono red that everyone just loves whenever it comes on the battlefield but it pretty much gives all our death touch people that as well as you know the ability to just have even a one one coming in that's swinging at it planeswalker and you know kill it just based on doing damage so i mean that's the concept of this deck it, it's one of those things that like it's it's an like a concept i haven't really fine-tuned it as you can kind of see i have like things in here like ones of like i don't like i'm not sure if i really want to include these like 
Is Vraska a good Planeswalker to play here? I mean, it does make 1-1 one, one Death Touchers, but is it the right utility that I need? I can cut maybe this. I like Nathrai just because, you know, sometimes you throw 1-1 one, one Death Touch into something and it dies. This allows us to get, allows us to mutate on any anything that's a non-human creature. It allows us to get uh, any number of total creatures from our graveyard with power 10 or less onto the battlefield. So it allows us to get a lot of our small draws back onto the battlefield later in the game. So, you know, it's like those things that I'm working with. And, and that's the thing that you gotta have to look at when it comes to deck building. It's like, you know, how deep do you want to go into a concept? Like, uh, I'm kind of really heavy into the death touch. Like, is this too much death touch? Like, is there a fair balance? Like, if you look at my breakdown, we have 25 creatures. We have three instances, which is our th only three removals. We have six sorceries. We have one planeswalker and 25 land. So are we at the right balance? Like, that's the one. That's the thing I get, I got to figure out. Like, do I need all these overgrown tombs, all these temples and ladies, plus all these forests? I know some of our green things are double green. Um, I mean, this one we really don't play for the actual creature. We really play for the mutate. So do we? Do we need this? Do I need to splash a white just in case? I need to physically play it onto the battlefield. I don't really know. Like this is kind of like the things as your deck building that you kind of have to figure out um, exactly. Like I have fours. I have, I have a lot of fours of everything. I have some twos. Um, so I mean, I haven't really fine tuned it. It's like when you play around with it. Um, I mean, it's always a good concept if you have an idea for a deck. To you know, if you have this deck, you are done with it. You know, you just throw it. You, you play it against the bot. You know, you throw it against the bot and see how the bot. You know how you do against the bot. If you can beat the bot fairly easy, then it could be a good concept to actually throw it into like a standard play. And then if you do very well there, and you're playing at some of the meta decks that sometimes people play in the play mode, then just bump it up into uh, standard rank and just see how you do. Because I mean, truly, when you play against rank, you'll f truly see where you actually lie. I do apologize, guys, if this is a lot of information. Um, I, I will try to get better at you know getting these fine tuned, but I, I just figured because you guys seem to be interested in the draft video I did and kind of deck building, I figured I'd just give, I'd give you another little deck building 101 uh, just as a heads up. Uh, the other thing too I would suggest real quick on deck building too is um, you know use your budget wisely. Uh, I know some of you guys are free to play players, some of you guys don't really spend a lot of money into the game just because you know it's magic can be very definitely a very expensive hobby just especially playing standard where there's a lot of things always like changing and never evolving uh just because every three months there's always a new set that comes out that kind of changes up the way the metagame works so i would say you know when it comes to deck building i, I would focus on one solid deck uh rather than kind of try to bounce and build a bunch of different decks uh maybe start out with a concept of some cards and then we see that you need to invest in something a little bit more rare like you know the rares and mythics you know focus on there and then as you kind of fine tune that deck to a point that you like it then maybe move on to you know maybe crafting your own um your own brew based on some other concept i would just kind of say just you know kind of reoccur the cards that you you know you may spend on the deck um over also just to throw it out there too always look at the store you know always look at the daily deals i mean today's not really a good day but sometimes they're always giving away gold i always like to reiterate that you know daily deals are something you should always look at every day sometimes they give away gems for gold sometimes they are giving away packs on the cheap um sometimes I, as much as those packs are on the cheap sometimes they're not the cheapest they're you know sometimes their discounts only like 200 gold but i mean you get a pack for 800 instead of a thousand it could save you a little bit of money um but yeah i mean the other thing too when it comes to the mastery pass is playing some games uh on the free level i mean you can you definitely at least until level 72 on the mastery pass you know you're getting free packs you're getting mastery things so it's definitely a good way to you know get packs for free so definitely you know grind out maybe your dailies grind out your your weekly i know sometimes playing 15 games a day is a little rougher and winning uh so you know that's something that could be a different time but i would definitely say take take advantage of the the weekly take advantage of your daily quests um you know look here uh sometimes there's events that happen uh you know like for example you got this which is fairly cheap it's a 500 but you can only use core constructed cards uh, and, you know, depending on how you do, and before you lose two games, you can definitely get a payout of 600 gold, three cards, stuff like that. Just stuff to build up your collection. Let me know in the comments below, guys, what you overall are running into challenge-wise. I'm going to try my best to kind of help you guys out as much as possible. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try my best to kind of help, you know, figure out what you guys are struggling with, maybe in Magic the Gather Arena. Leave me a comment down below with that. Uh, if you want to see any of the other videos that I've done, uh, I'm sure as I'm talking like there there's some things kind of next to me where it shows you some videos uh but if you like the video guys hit that like button definitely helps the channel out a lot if you want to know when i post more videos hit the subscribe button i will catch you in the next video